Okay, good morning. morning. Is somebody already falling asleep? No, all right, okay. (laughs) So, as you can see, of course, today's message isn't Winnie the Pooh, but it starts with Winnie the Pooh because that's what we're doing for this uh, summer juniper school. Um, Well, as you all know, this is what we've been practicing, right, for a semester and two weeks. Uh, And I just wanted to quickly share about the summary of this musical. And most of you, uh, half of us know what the story is about. Older students don't know, so I will just share quickly. These are the characters that appear in this musical. Actually, all the ones that really appear. (laughs) Yeah, so even the rainbow, that are also the characters in the musical, right? All those seven, and then if you count, we have 33 of them. Yes, all these animal friends and one human, (laughs) Christopher Robin. We have 33 of the students joining in this musical, playing all these characters and they're all important. Now, so, what are we talking about in this story? It starts with, you know, in the 100 acre wood, right? And uh, Christopher Robin says, my house, because usually it's a narrator of the story, it's Christopher Robin, but in this musical, actually, these uh, kids are the rainbow, is the narrators, right? They are the narrators who are explaining how the story goes. And then the story, of course, always, starts with Pooh being hungry. His tummy is like singing out, blah. <laughs> and then he's looking around for honey, and here comes Tigger bouncing in, right? And Tigger's like, ah, oh, hello. And he doesn't have honey, of course, but he says, I am for, you know, I will go out for adventure. And then Pooh's a little sad, and he went to Christopher Robin's house to look for honey, but Christopher Robin's not home. And he just left a note saying, gone out busy back soon, right? But, because Pooh, this little very cute creature, he can't understand, so he just met Piglet, his best friend, and Piglet's like, hmm, do I know what this means? I don't think so, but I know Rabbit is very good at puzzles, so Rabbit comes and he's, like, wait a minute, this is a terrifying note. This is, this is troublesome. We should ask Owl because he's so smart. He knows everything. And then Owl goes, <gasps> this means there's Baxon. This, this monster, he got Christopher Robin. And then everyone's just so scared, they're hiding. And then Pooh and Piglet thought of an idea. Why don't we make a trap for Baxon? So they just covered it with picnic cloth and then sadly Baxon didn't get caught but all these animal friends just got bounced in you know they are all trapped now and they were like what's happening but thankfully through the word of letters uh, letters words they were able to get out I know it's a little silly what what do you mean but that's how you know kids story goes so they just get out and then they have the greatest picnic ever. Yay! <laughs> That's how the story goes, okay. Um, and then they're very happy, yeah? And this story is made by A.A. A. Milne, at Mil, Mil, Milne, Milne, <laughs> this writer from long time ago. And I'm sure all of you have, at least if you didn't read the book, you've seen the characters from everywhere because it's also set uh, as a movie in Disney, of course. But He didn't write only Winnie the Pooh, but he also wrote many poems. And one of those were called When We Were Very Young. And that is um, the collection of poems for little children. And one of them is this... Actually, I can go this way. Oops. Oh, I'll play that first. Yes. And here it's the song from the musical. And listen to the words. And here's the second verse. You can 
can sing. It's okay. You can sing. It's okay. Musical kids can sing since you know the song. song in this musical that our students will sing and these are the lyrics that they were singing exactly the same and this is as I said a poem written by the same writer that wrote Winnie the Pooh and it says as we just heard the song halfway down the stairs is a stair where I sit there isn't any other stair quite like it I'm not at the bottom I'm not at the top so this is the stair where I always stop. Halfway up the stairs isn't up and isn't down. It isn't in the nursery, it isn't in the town, and all sorts of funny thoughts run round my head. It isn't really anywhere, it's somewhere else instead. Yeah? Very simple poem, right? Very simple. All the you know first graders can also understand kind of right, what what it's just just uh, as it said. It's not hard to understand, but what it's trying to say. So it's saying that this person who's sitting in the stairway in the middle of the way, not knowing like where I am. But at the same time, in the first verse, you can see how this person is very happy at that place. You know, this is where I stop. Because I'm sure it's not because he's scared, but it's because he's enjoying that time. But the second verse or stanza, it talks about how this is nowhere actually. I don't know where I am kind of thing. I mean, I'm not trying to have English class here, <laughs> but just, just uh, reading through this uh, poem and just listening to the song again and again. And this is actually the climax of the musical where through this song, they all come out of the trap, right? So I was trying to think, what is Min trying to say, you know? What, what are we trying to say through this poem? And I just, uh, by finding the meaning and trying to read it again, it's kind of saying, you know, we're in this transition. You're right in the middle of somewhere where you feel like, oh, I enjoy this place because I can dream about different things and I can picture different things, imagine different things. This is not my room. This is not like where people bustle about town, but this is a place where I can just enjoy my time. But at the same time, I'm a little bit confused where, uh, to see where I am in this place, but not only like location, but also in if you look at it in adults' perspective, like in the way of life, we kind of a little bit kind of, you know, a little bit confused with where we are. You know, we are busy living our lives and then we just stop somewhere and then you feel like maybe this is the end, but this is not the end. Maybe this is just the start. But this is not the start. Maybe this is, I don't know where, you know. So we can all have this kind of question at a place. It doesn't have to be stairway. So that reminded me of biblical story, the stairs. And then I was like, oh, that's right. There's a story about stairs or letter, Jacob's letter. Have you ever seen this kind of picture before? Maybe not, yeah? Of course, this is not real. This is just a picture, drawing of a Bible story. So the person at the bottom is Jacob sleeping. Do you guys know Jacob from Genesis? Yeah, yeah, most, I'm sure if you went to church, if you learned in Bible class, there's a guy named Jacob. This is another picture, same, same thing, but different picture, right? So this guy's name is Jacob. And we'll quickly read through this passage. It's, uh, Jacob's letter or Jacob's dream, usually that's the topic that we can name it. So we have long verses, many verses. So how about we have uh, first to third grade, fourth, fifth grade. Um, read. Okay, ready, go. Jacob left Beersheba. And, oh, too hard maybe. Okay, no problem. <laughs> How about 12th graders? Read 10 and 11. Ready, go. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. Thank you. And then 11th graders, verse 12. Ready, go. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven 
and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Okay, now 10th graders, ready, go. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Okay, verse 14, uh, ninth graders, ready, go. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Oh yeah, that D doesn't mean anything right now. Okay, verse 15, eighth graders, ready, go. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I'll bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Okay, and then verse 16, seventh graders, ready, go. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. Verse 17, sixth graders, ready, go. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Fourth, fifth graders, ready, go. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. One more verse. He called that place Bethel. Together, yeah. Though the city used to be called Luz. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if uh, first, second, third grade, you can, right? Let's try to read the, verse 20. Ready, go. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear. Continue. So that I return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God and everybody. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Amen. Okay, it was a long passage, but any of you kind of remember what this story is based on? Like before this happened, what was happening? Why is Jacob sleeping and he's like having, what is it, the stone as his pillow? Why is he doing this? Why is he sleeping in the field? Who's Jacob, first of all? Whose son? I know in Korean, Jacob. <laughs> Whose son? Isaac. Isaac's son. Okay. Now, Jacob's brother's name is what? Esau. Esau. Yeah. You guys know this story very well, I think. Right? So then Esau and Jacob, they were what? Twins. Oh, Doan, Doan are twins. <laughs> but anyways, they, uh, Esau was a guy who was very good at what? Yeah, hunting, maybe this way, <laughs> yeah, hunting, and he was wild guy, and then Jacob was very different, right? He was always at home helping mom and things like that, and then one day it was time for um, Isaac to give blessing, right, to his sons, and Esau was the first son, so he had to give it to him, and he couldn't see well, he was very old, and then he called them, oh, son, come, let me give you blessing, and then who came instead? Jacob, right? Uh, fooled Isaac, fooled the dead. And then Esau found this out later, right? And he was so mad, he said, I'm gonna kill this brother. And then Jacob was so scared and mom said, you had to run, you had to go away from our household for now and come back later. And then this is when Jacob was running away and he was sleeping in the field, right? And then he dreamed this dream. And um, as you can see, it's a, it's a, if you see, go back to that picture, it's, it's amazing how he saw a letter set from the earth to heaven. And at the top of the heaven, what did God say or the Lord said? I can go back to that verse. It says, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants, descendants mean like children, right, children and children next, the land on which you are lying, where you're lying and sleeping. Your kids, your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your children, offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. 
Wow, what a promise that God is giving. Faithful, powerful, loving God says, even though you're right in the middle of nowhere, I'm sure Jacob was like, I'm going to die here sleeping, maybe. And then this wonderful dream that God gives. And then he's promising. Right now, Jacob is not married. He has no children. And then God says, your children's children's children, your offspring, your descendants will be so many. And that's what God promised to who? Before Jacob, Abraham. Very good, right? Um, it's very similar. And this is the promise that God gives to this family, which is Israelites, which is us, if you think about it, God's people, right? And God's saying, I give you this promise. But of course, always God says, you should be with me. And in your way, in your life, I'm with you. Don't lose that. Don't, don't forget that, right? I give you this promise. It's not like, but, but at the same time, don't be confused or don't be, uh, you know, thinking the wrong way. Oh, so God will give me all the good things and I just live my life as I want and whatever. It's never like that, right? It's never like that. Not because we're scared of God, but because we love Him. Because we're so thankful that He gives this kind of promise to us. Maybe it's not about kids for you. I mean, it doesn't have to be we all should have 100 children. But it's about, you know, our life itself. And then I just brought this picture of stairs. And maybe some days, maybe younger kids, not yet, but as you get older, maybe 11th grade, 12th grade, even 9th grade, or even 6th grade, you might feel like I'm out of, you know, sitting in somewhere in the midway in the stairs of life. And you feel like, where am I? What am I doing? You know, I enjoy it here. I mean, musical is fun, but where am I going to go after this? Or where was I before? You know, even as an adult, you know, I'm pretty old. My kids always ask me, I say 1,000 years old. <laughs> they ask me, how old are you? 1,000. <laughs> but anyways, you know, living this life, you always have these times and moments that you feel like, where am I? You know, I don't know. God, are you listening to me? You know, I have these prayers. I don't know. SAT scores are like this. I'm not happy. You know, my GPA's not so good. Lord, what are you doing? Are you going to do something with my life? And God says, I promise you, you know, this is my promise to you, that I love you, that I'll be with you wherever you go, right? And God said this many times in the Bible, not only to Jacob, not only to Abraham, but all the people that God loves, that is God's people, which is you, right, that believes in Jesus Christ. He says, this is my promise. So don't be lost in the way. Even though you feel like, oh, I don't know, am I down, am I up? Sometimes you feel like I'm nowhere, but God knows where you are. And God is carrying you with him all the way. So whenever you feel, maybe you feel like you're at the up, you know, top of the stairs. Maybe you feel like you're at the downside of the stairs, but you're still going up. Some people feel like I'm going down again. I feel like I'm failing again. I feel like I'm in trouble again. And this isn't, you know, my life isn't good. Maybe God is not there but he is there keeping you in his arms. So let's con continue to trust in him and go up the stairs with Jesus, Jesus Christ, who is with us, who's, who's loving us so much, okay? So let's pray.